love before us, we are walking. Bonjour, Tansi, Unusakut. We would like to say Kekwada Dina Otli Shalaknai. We say, May God be with you. You are all our relatives. We are really happy to welcome you to Gospel Jam 7. And 7 is a beautiful, complete, and blessed number. And I think that we can expect to have a special kind of anointing on this one. Uh, this one, the theme is, With Love Before Us, We Are Walking. And walking is a very special word in many of our indigenous languages. Uh, particularly in the Algonquian languages, we can say walking uh, has to do with life. And in, indeed, um, uh, in, in the uh, Anishinaabe languages, it has, it's at the root word for the salvation that we receive from Jesus. We understand that this love that goes before us is the love of the living word of God that goes before us. We'd like to welcome you to this jam. This is a tradition that goes back uh, at least uh, 150 years in, uh, among indigenous peoples. It is a tradition that grew up among them. It is not something that came from uh, the, the people across the seas. It was a way in which they received the hymn to, uh, hymns that came from across the seas, and then they, it, it spread uh, like the, the, the fire of the Holy Spirit and went all across, all across the land, uh, uh, all across uh, to the, to the, from the Atlantic, uh, to the Pacific, um, all the way to the, to the Arctic coast, all the way to the coast of Alaska. And, and, and that's uh, very much like the audience that we have tonight. And, and we are going out in that way. And love is, is going before us as we are walking. I'm going to ask that you would join with me in prayer as we... Uh, invoke the Holy Spirit. Jewain a missionang, Mayamawi Mashkabazin, Gaye, Jewain Jigain, Gishi Manado, the Benjigay, Gishikon Gaye, a king. Gay me grits, when we go, O O Ga Ezu Jewain me young. Gay Bago Sain me go, Sa Apana, Che Jewain me young. A pace minoging. We see Gingin Gi Akin, a Pegas Ninawin, Chimana Wanigo, a Go Young, Meminda Gay, Gi the Ma Gisiag, a Pegas Gisikwa Wain the Mang, Wain the Ming, Get Isn Kazwin, Gabe Gisikon Gaye a King, Onzi Gis a Wain the Gayen, Edo Ekidowin. Gitsi Gitsi Manido Mi Gain. Blessed are you, Almighty and merciful God, ruler of heaven and earth. We give you our humble and earnest thanks for your overwhelming goodness with great respect. We ask that you would continue your loving kindness to us, that your land may give us the fruits of your goodness, that you may comfort us all and especially those who are poor, that your name may be sanctified throughout heaven and earth through your merciful word. Uh, we ask this in the name of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're here. We've asked God's blessing upon us. We uh, are praying for the Holy Spirit to anoint this, to anoint what you hear, uh, to anoint uh, to anoint you as you listen, and we are going to go right to 
some uh, special music, and we're, we're going to Dallas. Now, not that Dallas. We're going to Dallas, Manitoba, and we're going to Ardell Token, Haley Token, Charity Token, Ernie Stevenson, Sonny Stevenson, and they're singing, There is Healing in the Room, and this is a song that is written by Haley. Uh, let's go to that now. grateful for that offering. And uh, a regular feature of our Gospel Jams is the primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. We're very happy to have her with us. And uh, that is the uh, Most Reverend uh, Linda Nichols. So uh, please, Linda, would you share with us now? Good evening, friends. It is good to be with you again for another one of the Gospel Jamborees. And this one on the eve of Valentine's Day, the day we celebrate the gift of human love for one another. But we especially celebrate the gift of God's love for us and for the whole world. So tonight I'm going to play a hymn, New Every Morning is the Love. Sleep 
we're very grateful to our primate for that offering. Now, we believe that from the very beginning, the word of God has framed and uh, uh, given life to creation. Without the word and spirit, uh, creation would not exist. If you withdraw the word and spirit, uh, creation is, is no more. And uh, there is not a moment, not a particle of creation that the word is not present. Um, so um, although uh, the word became a human being as a very special moment in creation, that's what we believe the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is, uh, we believe that in all places and in all times, and also in your life, uh, the, the, the word walks before us. And we believe that the word uh, becomes flesh, becomes living and real, uh, that love becomes living and real. And in this time of great hardship and difficulty, uh, we believe that love is, is be becoming living and real. So uh, I, I think this is a real critical reminder. And that, that's, what, that's what we're trying to, to, to bring before us. And uh, we have a very special uh, uh, poetic teaching about that from, uh, uh, from um, our sister, Ginny. So uh, please listen with your ears, with your mind, and with your heart. That's, uh, I, uh, that's the way we listen to scripture. It's also the way we listen to poetry. Now, again, in this, this critical time in creation and in history, uh, it is so important that we understand that love is walking uh, before us, that love is going before us, and we now are walking also. Uh, please, uh, with your mind, with your ears, with your heart, uh, uh, listen as uh, Ginny teaches us. Our ancestors walked many trails of tears through wars, famine, illnesses, many miles to give us life, walked with Gunalunkwa, a love that surrounds our being, lifts our hearts to the treetops to watch the world heal, a time of resting, a time of waiting, patience breathes through the leaves, a time to show our love for self, for each other, for creation. We gather our love to bring it forth to all who need it, all who will grasp it, all who will pass it on. Mother Earth turns, Brother Sun rises. Grandmother Moon still watches ebb and flow. After all the harm we've done, they have the love to keep going. All we need is a little of what was before. It's there, in the grass, in the waters, in the flowers, all that lives in Mother Earth. All over, open your senses. All of the goodness comes from the Creator's love. Take it deep, let it be there. When time is right, take it out. Let it go all over, all around. We'll sing, we'll dance, we'll pray. Bounded by love, we become all that Creator wants us to be, all that the Creator wants us to have. Faith is resilience, resilience is faith. Love is hope, hope is love. Walk on with love, 
with strength for a new tomorrow. Make the ancestors smile. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Ginny, for that. Now, uh, we're going to uh, uh, go to uh, two different parts of the uh, uh, Cree universe. Uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, James Bay, but uh, then we'll go back to uh, uh, OG Cree territory. Uh, Karina Hester from Wiscoganish in, in Quebec, and, uh, uh, and J.C. Moore from uh, Fort George, Quebec, are going to be singing the Cree hymn, Heavenly Father, bless me now. And, uh, and then uh, uh, our, our, our good f friend and brother, Dominic Beardy from uh, Kingfisher Lake, is going to be singing a, a, another offering. So let's, let's go to them right now. Hello. Um, Sharon, I know Cree hymns. Zi a Heavenly Father bless me now,
I really uh, don't have uh, enough words uh, and and uh, deep deep enough words to be able to describe uh, this moment. Um, we are so pleased to have uh, uh, um, my friend and, and brother, uh, the presiding bishop of the uh, Episcopal Church, uh, Michael Curry, with us. Um, I, I've known uh, uh, Michael for 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 uh, uh, many decades, and uh, and I, I have to say his uh, preaching and teaching. And, and, and also, his, his person has uh, touched me to my core. I would say uh, he has lived and preached consistently love and the way of Jesus uh, as, as no one else uh, in our church. And uh, he has uh, consented to be with us. When we talked about uh, doing this, when we got to our theme, uh, who else would we look to? And uh, we, <laughs> we, we didn't really know that we would be able to, to get uh, uh, him. He's, he's a, a very busy man, but uh, 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 God be praised, we were, we were able to ask him, and, and he consented, and we're really, really happy to share this with all of you now. I, I pray that, uh, uh, that God will anoint what he says, uh, and I pray that your hearts and minds and ears will be anointed as you listen to what he shares with us now. Hello, I'm Michael Curry, presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church and a friend and colleague and brother in Jesus Christ of your Archbishop, Archbishop Mark McDonald. It is a joy and it is a privilege to be able to offer a word in this time of pandemic and hardship for so many, to offer a word of hope from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the 13th chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, so you should love one another. For by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. A new commandment, a new commandment. I give you that you love one another just as I have loved you. When I was a little boy, I learned a song in church school and Sunday school that I suspect many of you may well have learned as well. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Archbishop McDonald and I go back a number of years when we both were young and relatively new bishops serving in the house of bishops here in the Episcopal Church. At that time, I got to know him and admire him, and he came and spoke at one of our diocesan conventions when I was the Bishop of North Carolina. And I invited him to come and speak because he had shared some of the things he had learned about the sacred circle, about the sacred circle among Christian people, among Anglican and Episcopal Christians and other Christians. And he shared with our convention at that time that when the community gathers in the sacred circle, a book called the Bible is placed at the center of the circle because the center of the circle guides the community. 
the Bible is placed there and opened to the New Testament, specifically to the Gospels, to the teachings of Jesus and his way of love. That open book, that New Testament, those Gospels of Jesus, his teachings, his example, his life, his spirit, that is what guides all living that happens in the sacred circle of life, that guides us as we make decisions, that guides us as we relate to each other, that helps us to learn how to live by the power of love and be guided by love in all that we do, in all that we say. And that open book, that open Bible, that open gospel, to the gospel of Jesus is our guide because at the center of the circle, the center of the circle of life is Jesus. A friend of mine named Charles Marsh, who is a scholar um, in one of his books says, Jesus founded the most revolutionary movement in all of human history. It was a movement of people who allowed Jesus and his teachings and his way of love to become the center of their lives. And Jesus and his way of love changed their lives. And in turn, they changed the world. When Jesus, when his gospel, his teachings, his way of love is at the center of the circle of our lives, we change. And when we change, the world around us changes. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. If Jesus is at the center of the circle of our lives, and his way of love becomes our way of life. For at the center of the teachings of Jesus, at the center of his very life is love. If you don't believe me, ask the New Testament. Let's go right to the gospels. Ask John's gospel, John chapter three, verse 16. What does it say? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Notice the words, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was because of love, the love of God, that Jesus came into the world. It was because of love to show what the lengths that God's love will go that Jesus went to the cross to sacrifice his life, not for anything that he could get out of it, not for himself, not so he could, be could become famous or wealthy. Jesus gave his life for the sake of others, for the sake of the world. That's what love looks like. And it's because of God's love that he came and because of the love of God that he was willing to die for others. But if John 3.16 doesn't convince you that love is at the center of the life and teachings of Jesus, how about John, uh, Matthew chapter 22? It is the story where a lawyer comes up to Jesus and the lawyer says to him, and it's, he's probably testing him, but he, but he says, great teacher, you are a great teacher of the law of Moses. Tell me, what is the greatest law in the entire legal edifice of Moses? And Jesus says, well, he goes back to Deuteronomy in the Old Testament and Leviticus, and he, and he brings out what Moses taught. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and strength. This is the first and the great commandment, but the second is like unto it. The second is just like it. Just as you love the Lord your God, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus in Matthew's gospel adds these words on these two, love of God and love of neighbor as yourself. On these two, hang all the law and the prophets. 
the law and the prophets was a way of talking about the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, the Bible in that time, which was a way of saying that everything that is written in, in the Hebrew Bible, and by extension, everything that is written in the Christian New Testament, everything that is in the Bible, it is about love. It is about love, that everything God has been trying to say through the prophets, everything that is written in God's word, everything that Jesus is about, it's about love, because love is about God at the very heart of God. And if it's not about love, it's not about God. And if that's not enough to convince you, our text from the 13th chapter of John's gospel, it is the last supper. Jesus is about to sacrifice his life as an act of love. And he says to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, not, not a new option, not something new to consider. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Oh, my brothers and sisters and siblings, you hear what Jesus is saying there? I give you a new commandment. Now, the truth is um, uh, the, the, the command to love in and of itself was not new. Moses had taught that in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, the, the, the command of God to, to love was not new. The Old Testament speaks over and over again of the steadfast love of God. You'll see it all over the Psalms. But here's what was new. What was new was what Jesus added. He said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you that Jesus at the center of the sacred circle, Jesus at the center of the sacred circle of our lives where we live, his way of love becomes our way of life and we love like him, we give like him, we forgive like him, we do justice like him, we love mercy like him, we walk humbly with God just like Jesus. When we love like Jesus, we help to wake our communities and even our world a better place. But I know someone is wondering, does love have the power? Does it have the power? Does it have the power to move lives? doesn't have the power to change worlds. Think about people in your life, people who have made a difference, a positive difference in your life. They were people who loved you, and cared about you, not for what they could get from you, but what they could give to you. That kind of love reflects the love of God. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave, he didn't take, he gave. That kind of love is the greatest power in all the world. The doctors and scientists who are working to find a vaccine and cure for this COVID-19, many of them are working long hours, sacrificing themselves, sacrificing time so that they can do everything, hopefully to end this virus, this pandemic. Those who have done good in our societies and in our communities have done so very often sacrificing themselves the people who have made a difference in, in human life and human civilization and society in our cultures have very often and most often been people who were willing to sacrifice sometimes their, their very lives for the good and the welfare and the well-being of others. No, do not diminish the power of love. But the Bible says it this way and maybe it says it best. First John chapter four, the Bible says, beloved, let us love one another because love is of God and those who love are born of God 
and know God, but those who do not love do not know God. Why? Because God is love. There's power in love to lift up and liberate. There's power in love to help and heal. Love can help when nothing else can. Love can heal when nothing else will. My, my grandmother, my grandma used to love that old song. I don't know if y'all know the old gospel song. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the distant shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters, he lifted me, now safe am I. And then the refrain says, oh, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else would help. Love lifted me. Love is the greatest power in all the world because the source of all true love is God. And if God be for us, who can be against us? As the apostle said in Romans 8, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, not things present, not things to come, not height, not depth, not anything else in all God's great, grand, and glorious creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Allow me to bring this message to a conclusion. In the early 1990s, seems like it was a long time ago, my father suffered a severe stroke. He had been out shoveling snow, which he shouldn't have been doing at his age, but he had been out shoveling snow, and, and he had a stroke. One of the neighbors saw him and got the uh, ambulance, and they came and took him to the hospital and had to operate immediately. And he was living in Buffalo. I was living in actually in Cincinnati at the time. This was in the late 80s, excuse me. And so I got to um, got to Buffalo as quick as I could and got there probably the next day after he had had the surgery. And his his uh, sister, one of his sisters, Carrie, my Aunt Carrie had gotten to the hospital as well. And we were, he was in intensive care after surgery and not fully conscious. The anesthesia hadn't yet worn off. But I was in the hospital room in the ICU with, with Aunt Carrie and daddy was laying there on the bed. And I saw her take back the sheets and she started rubbing his legs. And, and, and she was rubbing his legs and, and singing. She was singing gospel, you know, old hymns, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. She was singing those old songs. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else would help. Love lifted me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my savior all the day long. And then she sang these words. Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And it was soon thereafter, I mean, not exactly why she was singing, but soon thereafter that for the first time he opened his eyes. Now to be sure the anesthesia was beginning to wear off and he was resuming some levels of consciousness. But there's a part of me that suspects that as the medicine was withdrawing and, and doing its work, my Aunt Carrie's voice sounded like the voice of his mother. Because Aunt Carrie told me his mother used to sing those songs and rub his legs when he was a little boy. Because when my daddy was a little boy, he had polio. He couldn't walk sometimes. 
and his mother would rub his legs and put some oils on his legs, and bandage them up. And she would sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And there's a part of me that suspects. He heard his mother's voice and felt the power of her love. The voice in the woman who told him and taught him about somebody named Jesus, whose love he saw in her. And it helped to open his eyes. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all in those almighty hands of love. We, we know that you were blessed by that. And uh, again, we were so happy to, to be able to have uh, the presiding bishop, Michael Curry, with us. Uh, wonderful. We are very, very happy to share something very special with you. Um, Father Paul Snavy, uh, who is a, a, a friend and a, a brother of mine, uh, comes from a, a, a Lakota family uh, that is, uh, I, I, you know, dare, dare to say uh, Lakota uh, ro royalty anyway. So uh, he is a, 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 a one of our, 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 our leaders. I, I dare say uh, he is uh, if he isn't an elder, he's really on the cusp of elderhood and uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man and leader. Um, uh, he has written a, 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 a poem uh, uh, of four directions. And uh, 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 the uh, beauty of this is that our beloved sister, uh, Dixie Bird, is going to uh, read this for us. Um, and I, I forgot to mention that uh, uh, Paul is the archdeacon um, of in, in, in is an archdeacon in the Episcopal Diocese of South Dakota. So uh, uh, we're going to look to Dixie now to read this poem for us. Let us turn our hearts to the west. From there, the thunders bring us cleansing rain. Grandfather God, heal us and our relatives. Let us turn our hearts to the north. Winter comes to us from there and calls us to rest. Grandfather God, restore our strength. Let us turn our hearts to the east. The morning sun begins each day there. Grandfather God awakens us to help us to walk with a renewed life. Let us turn our hearts to the south where the warm winds come from to give us comfort and joy. Grandfather God, soothe our aching soul. Let us turn our hearts to the sky. From there our Creator sees all around us. Grandfather God helps us to trust you to lead us. Let us turn our hearts to the earth. From there quiet wisdom comes to teach us. Grandmother God, hear us as we pray.
My dear sister, the Reverend Canon Debbie Royals, uh, who's Pasqua Yaki from Tucson, Arizona, is going to be singing the ancestors' song. So uh, blessings from the southern part of uh, uh, Turtle Island. Uh, we'll, we'll go there right now. Leos and Chiani Avu. My name is Debbie Royals. I'm Pasquayaki from Tucson, Arizona. I greet you on this beautiful winter day in Arizona. Today I'm going to sing the ancestor song to, for you. And I ask you to join me as we remember our ancestors for generations past. All right, we're, um, we've been to the southern part of Turtle Island and we're going to go a little bit uh, to the north now. And uh, we're going to start off, we're going to go to someone that uh, many of you know, and that is uh, our, our, our bishop, uh, Isaiah Beardy. Uh, many of you know him as Larry. And uh, uh, He's from Tataskia Cree Nation, and uh, he is going to be singing "Walking the Good Road," which is a particularly uh, powerful uh, song for for what we're what we're talking about uh, this evening. And then um, uh, uh, a special treat: uh, 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 Bishop Gordon Light and Barb uh, Leotsos from uh, Kamloops, B.C is going to be singing in the in unus of life so uh, 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 there we there we go we're not we're not we're not all, all the way to the arctic yet but uh, we're, we're we're on our way Yeah. 
Hello, everybody. We wish you love and joy from Kamloops, British Columbia, as we walk together in the beauty of Jesus Christ. This song's called In Newness of Life, and um, we find that by walking with Jesus, too. <laughs> okay. Welcome, dear. from uh, someone who has blessed us a number of times uh, in uh, uh, Gospel Jams, and that's uh, uh, Charlie O.J. Beardy from, uh, coming to us from Winnipeg, and he's going to be singing When the Angels Sing, and that, uh, that, that sounds very wonderful and powerful. And, uh, uh, and then also, uh, we are going to be listening to Edwin Sepulveda and friends from Mississippi, Quebec, and they are singing unto the Lord. So uh, uh, let's, let's 
enter into worship and the presence of God and, and, and into uh, these, uh, these, these songs. When love is faithful, strong and true When the breath of life is given you When flowers bloom in the early spring That's the time in heaven sing above the blue a promise of a world that's new and dear demise no more will be when the angels sing for you and me
Now, um, the Apostle Paul in Galatians describes the pain that he is going through for the Galatians as uh, uh, similar to uh, uh, the, the pains of, uh, uh, the, that a mother goes through uh, as, as she's about to go through birth. Now, I, I think some of, some of you mothers out there might say, well, that's easier for him to say. But, but, but put that aside for a moment. The, 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 the scriptures use that on a, in, in a number of occasions to describe the way in which uh, troubles, uh, persecutions, and difficult times often are used by the Spirit of God to give birth to beautiful things. Uh, th this Gospel Jam is an example, um, and there are a number of other things as well. Um, the, podcasts that uh, 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 Ginny and Lisa and Ben and others have been working on are another example of that. And they have blessed many, thousands really. And if you haven't had a chance to take that in, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing for you. So here, here's, here's a, 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 a a little bit on those podcasts that uh, I hope will invite you into that, uh, to that blessing. had the blessing of uh, hearing the elders of Church Army uh, uh, up in uh, BC, uh, in, uh, in Terrace and, and a, a few other places, uh, to sing and worship and to praise God. And uh, you're going to have that blessing now. They're going to sh share with us uh, river of anointing, and uh, uh, we're happy to offer that to you. Uh, I, I know it's, it's going to inspire you. Now, uh, also, here, here we have from my home state of Minnesota, uh, Bruce Land uh, from Appleton in Minnesota. Uh, he's going to sing two songs, How Great Thou Art and Just a Closer Walk.
my burden share none but thee dear Lord none but Time for me will be no more Guide me gently, safely, O oh, To thy kingdom shore, to thy shore is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear Lord let it be let it be dear Lord let it Okay, um, we were really happy to share those two things for you. Now this next session, section is, uh, uh, I think, a very special one. Um, uh, uh, this f first offering is from the Blue Mountain Tribe from Tehachapi, California. They're going to be singing Pray for Our Planet. and. Uh, uh, they are two-time winners at the Native American Music Awards, and uh, they are an indigenous blues rock band. Uh, uh, exciting to offer that to you tonight. And then the Reverend Dr. Buddy Van Dyke from Decatur, Alabama, and he's saying, take it. Now, uh, this is so important. I'm going to read this directly to, to, for you. In seminary in the late 90s, uh, Buddy watched a movie called The Mission. And this made him become aware of how great the church was involved in what happened to the 60 million people that lived here when Co Columbus supposedly discovered uh, Turtle Island and the Americas. It started him searching deeper and looking into it and found a series of things called Do The Doctrine of Discovery, and he wrote this song. So uh, we're very excited to be able to offer this to you. Uh, we'll go to that now. The land is sacred. These words are at the core of your being. The land is our mother. The rivers are blood. Take our land away and we die. That is, the Indian in us dies. Mary Brave Bird, Lakota. Something's going wrong 
is a, a bittersweet one. Um, I'm uh, introducing um, our, our sister Ginny, uh, who is going to be uh, introducing a tribute for um, our um, great uh, brother and leader, uh, Malcolm Chun. Uh, uh, Malcolm uh, 
was uh, one of the most important people in my life and uh, uh, really one of our most important indigenous leaders. Uh, um, I, 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 I've got to stop because I, I'm going to let uh, what comes after speak, but uh, uh, let me just say uh, there aren't enough words for, for me to describe what, 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 what he means to me personally, but uh, I'm going to let this tribute speak for all that he means for us, and uh, we'll go to Ginny right now. Sego Skinnego, I am Ginny Doctor, and I'm here to introduce the next selection. The next selection is a tribute to Malcolm Chun. Malcolm Chun has long been a good friend and ally of Indigenous ministry in Canada. Malcolm is Native Hawaiian. He has uh, been a carrier of the culture. He's in, in many regards a cultural expert and has done much to preserve not only the customs and culture, but also the language of Native Hawaiians. And he is a fierce warrior for all Indigenous people. And he has dedicated his life to making sure that Indigenous voices are heard across the world. I've known Malcolm for oh almost 30 years, I think, and tragically he, he passed in January of 2019. He attended numerous circuit, sacred circles and presented us with his knowledge and expertise on a variety of subjects. And he is sorely missed by many as we move about on this earth. And we know that Malcolm, although he was a fierce warrior, he also was a very gentle, loving spirit and he often would show his emotions when things were very important to him and when he could see injustices done to our Indigenous people. So we miss him, but we continue on because we know that's what Malcolm would want us to do. So please enjoy this tribute. Uh, it was done by his good friend, Nahoa Lucas, and then edited further by G.J. Gordy of Navajo Land. Nyawa.
dear relatives, it's been wonderful to spend this time with you. And uh, uh, we know that uh, a holiday that uh, at one time was associated with the churches uh, coming up, uh, it's kind of been um, captured by uh, the, the, the rest of the world. But uh, let's uh, recapture it, but uh, recapture it with, with love. Let us recapture the whole world with love. At this point in time, with love going before us, uh, uh, we, we are walking. And uh, we want to, to uh, uh, have love in your life. Uh, know that love is going before you. We want you to um, walk in confidence, uh, knowing that God is doing something great, that God is walking before you. Um, I'm going to uh, close us uh, with a prayer. Uh, normally, I would close with a blessing, but I'm going to uh, uh, close with the uh, uh, the way that uh, that uh, uh, the the, ne the Navajo people close, uh, uh, and you'll you I'll translate it into rough English, but uh, uh, you'll hear the word "hojo" in it uh, quite uh, often. "Hojo" is roughly translated "beauty," but it's a much more uh, complicated word than that, and. Uh, those of you who know your, your mother tongue, you know there's certain words, they just don't come out in English very well. Uh, that's one of them. And even though it's translated beauty, it, it also has a connotation that is close to the word of love because it, uh, Hojon has an idea that um, everything in, uh, around you, in, in the environment around you, uh, is 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 in harmony, is in balance, is in in goodness. Uh, the the way things are, when when things are filled with love. So uh, I want you to, to to understand that. Uh, please uh, keep in prayer. Uh, please keep in hope. Uh, please keep in faith, and keep your eyes open. Because we do believe in the midst of all this suffering, in the midst of all the, these trials, that something is being born in the midst of us that's good, uh, that something is coming that is powerful, uh, that something is, is coming uh, that is of God, and that something that we, we will see uh, will be the heart, the eyes, the mind, the life of Jesus, the life of love. So I ask that you would uh, join in your mind and in your heart uh, with me in prayer. Gitsi uh, Manado, Almighty God, uh, we come into your presence uh, not on the basis of our goodness, um, not even on the basis uh, so much of, of our desire, but of, of, of the request that uh, you have made of us in your son Christ and uh, the promises that you have made to us in him of compassion and understanding. Uh, we are not worthy of the kindness and goodness that you have given to us. We are um, in, in such need at this time, and it is because we know that you love us that we trust that you will help us. There are so many people in such need, uh, so many people who are listening to us right now that are, 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 are in need of help. We pray that you would visit uh, everyone who is touched by the sound of my voice, uh, that you would touch them and bless them. Go to, to those uh, who are sick. Go to those who are in despair. Uh, go to those who are uh, uh, considering hurting themselves. 
uh, go to those who are lonely, uh, go to those who, who have given up hope and fill them with hope and light. Let all of us know that lo your love, your life is going before us. And help us to see what you are doing in front of us and help us to stand up and walk uh, in that direction of hope and life that we might be strong and grasp the opportunities before us to live. Uh, help us to work for the poor, the sick, uh, the hungry, the ones who are in prison. Uh, help, us, help us to live for our, our children and our vulnerable ones and for our elders. Um, turn back the, 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 the disease that is threatening so many of us and so many of our communities. Be with our leaders, um, our traditional leaders. Uh, be with our uh, chief and councils, uh, our chiefs and councils. Uh, be with our clergy and our lay leaders and our catechists and our, 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 our priests and deacons and bishops, uh, our pastors and, and uh, preachers of all denominations. Uh, uh, be with all of our leaders, wherever they might be, our spiritual leaders, our traditional leaders, all who are serving the people. Uh, we, uh, we ask that you would help us all. And so we turn these things over to you. We pray that your goodness and life and salvation may be in each and every one of us and that we might turn our hearts and our minds and our lives over to you. And so as we come to a close, we pray in uh, Ode Eastern Cosmic in Jesus to Benjigate in the name of Jesus, and we offer this prayer uh, in, 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 in hope and in faith. Hosogo Nashado, Shetje Hosogo Nashado, Shekete Hosogo Nashado, Shedegi Hosogo Nashado, Al no so Hosogo Nashado, Hosona Hasli, Hosona Hasli, Hosona Hasli, Hosona Hasli. We are walking in beauty. There is beauty before us. There is beauty behind us. There is beauty above us. There is beauty everywhere, all around us. And all that we are doing, it is uh, being completed in beauty. It is being completed in beauty. It is being completed in beauty. It is being completed in beauty. So everyone have a beautiful evening. May God grant you many, many, you and your family, many, many happy years. Good night.